Hello, I'm John Shannon. Today's lesson, A Brand New Start. Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 16. Please stay tuned and I hope you enjoy uh, this message. Amen. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, the text that was read by Brother that's good, Brother Rico did a good job. Well, this is 2015. It's January the 18th. I believe this is the third Sunday of the year. God has allowed us to see 2015. I can remember back when I was a boy, 1960, 1959, 1952, 1953. I can remember back then, yeah. Some of them shaking. I remember when I started school back in the early 50s. I never thought that I would see 2015. Amen. Amen. Now somebody here know what I'm talking about. Amen. We got some folks in here and one lady here that's born in 1924. Amen. She's still here. Amen. We got a man born in 1925. Amen. They're still here. Are y'all listening? Now you ask them, did they think that they ever had it in their mind that they're going to see 2015? They probably said, there ain't no way. But they're still here. Amen. We're still here. Amen. Now in this life, we all make mistakes. And many times we want to look at everybody else's mistakes and never look at ours. Well, we all got problems and we all make mistakes. Um, Sometimes we make mistakes with our children. Amen. You have your first child and you made mistakes with your first one. Then you get pregnant again, have another one, you try to do better. Amen. You make mistakes again. Right. Then you have a third one and just get on and on and on. Right. Right. We are a people who make mistakes. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. When I was going to school, we used to have something that's called a, a pencil. And the pencil always came with an eraser on. I used to wonder why they put this. Well, I once I got started, I understood. You make mistakes. You want to start all over again. You 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 separate from your spouse. Separate from your family. Separate from God. Then you want to make up. A brand new start. Yep. Amen. That's what I want to talk about this morning now. A brand new start. Right. Amen. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if I get a new house, I'm going to keep it clean. That may not or may be true. Right. It depends on how your mind is. Right. Be careful about criticizing people to, well, they're not going to do nothing with that because they didn't do nothing with that. Well, all the time that's not true. Amen. 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 What you what did you do with yesterday? Can't bring it back. Now, but you got another day. Got a brand new day. You can talk about all the mistakes that you made yesterday. You can't undo that. That time and everything's gone. Now, this morning I, I want to talk on a lesson here. Uh, 
a brand new start. Right. Isn't that all right? Somebody say that. A brand new start. No God can give us a brand new start. Amen. Brand new start. Amen. 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 Is that all right? Amen. Can you all see that? Amen. I want to talk about a brand new start. Brand new start. Listen to me, church. Turn it loose. What do you mean? Last year, turned it loose. All of the mistakes you made, made last year, turned it loose. Hey, man. And let it go. Stop thinking. Hey, man, we do it as this almost a natural thing. Brother Bullock, when you make mistakes in life, you want to take, it, take your mind back there. Right. What that will do is depress you. Right. Amen. You keep on thinking about, hey amen. I, I, I've been guilty of it, Mike. I, I, I bake some baked goods, breads, and rolls, and, and all while I made it, and it didn't come out right. And it's for somebody. And there's no way that I can redo the bread once I bake it. Let me tell you something about bacon. If you put too much salt in your bread, you don't. When it get done, you can't undo that. You know what you're going to have to do? You got to make a new batch. <laughs> Think, are you listening? Amen. Things you do in life, you make mistakes. Amen. The Lord knows that we're like that. Right. Amen. Let it go. Start all over. Has anybody here never had to start all over? If you lie about that, you'll lie about anything. Amen, somebody. Dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. Amen. I've even uh, sold a little bit. Y'all know what a sewing machine is? I know what a sewing machine is. I know what a surgery is. I know what a, all that stuff, double, a blind stitch. I know all about that stuff. I made stuff and just dissatisfied with it. Let me just tell you a little bit about sewing. When you sew, Sister Brown is here. I think Sister Brown is here. She's an old seamstress. You can't get in a hurry when you're sewing. Wait a minute. You're going to mess something up? And let me tell you something, it's hard getting that stuff loose once you're not messed up. Sometimes you get mad and just cut it up and start all over again. You're dissatisfied with things that you did last year. But you got to let it go, be devoted. One thing, have your mind focused in the right direction. Preach, Brother Shannon. You got to be disciplined. Let me stop here a moment. Anything that's worthwhile, you're going to have to be devoted. You're going to have to be disciplined. People who are not disciplined really never accomplish anything very much. You got to be disciplined. In order to be be disciplined, you have to beat on yourself. I'm going to make myself. I'm not going to do it. Yes, you got to talk to yourself. Wait right. a minute. Man. Talk to yourself. Yeah, you know, as a gospel preacher, I have so much to do, Helen, that you just won't believe. I wouldn't dare to try to tell you. Right. You don't have enough time. But it's so many things you have to do to make things work all the time. You start missing and letting one thing go and another. Next thing you know, the whole thing is messed up. People who don't do anything, they don't understand about being persistent. Uh Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. We got Brother Clyde Jones. told me one time, Brother Shannon, you need to delegate some authority. 
I said, Joan, I don't have no problem with that. But Brother Clifford, before he died, Brother Jones, I'll do it. I said, you sure you want it? Yeah, I'll take it. Ain't nothing but driving the van. I said, okay. <laughs> okay. But see, he didn't see what he didn't understand was this. He going to have to get up at 6.30 to get a shave and shower to come over here and pick the van up. And he got to be over here by 7 or 7.15 to drive all over town to pick up these people that's going to be on time. But they're not going to be on time. Some of them going to be saying, wait a minute, I got to go back in. My well, brother John got to count the call. He said, well, brother Shannon, I don't know. He said, man, these folks are something. I said, wait a minute now. Hey, it's a different story when you get in there. It's a lot involved just driving the van. It's got to be taken care of. It's got to be maintenance pull on it. The license, insurance. What? People just ride. Ain't nothing. Everything ain't nothing free. Where you come from? Preach, Brother Shannon. Not only discipline, got to be determined. Determination. Now, all the stuff you did last year, you say you was going to do, be careful about making New Year's resolution because you may not be able to keep them as you think. You, you work with, hey man, we're going to get down to that. You know, you have to make some, hey amen, some sensible endeavors. Yes, sir. Don't make some unreasonable. Right. Let me just do this. Here, here you are. You weighing six or seven hundred pounds. And you say, it took you 20 years to get like that. You say, I figure in 20 days, I, I, I'm going to lose a hundred pounds. No, you fooling yourself. Your food just said, hey, "Amen." Just get, get, be disciplined. Do a little at a time. Well, I must fulfill life's purpose. You ever thought about that? I want to talk to the church a little bit. LB, we ought to have a life purpose. What is your purpose? Why are you a member of the body of Christ? Why are you what you are? What's your purpose? You got to fulfill. Life's purpose. We all have a purpose. Are you going to fulfill your destiny? I must forsake life uh, preoccupation. What do you mean? Stuff you used to do, I don't count. No. 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 It reminds me of a rabbit hunting. You kill a rabbit, you just jump it up and jump down. You just done kill one. Dog got to jump another rabbit and run it and you got to kill it. Wait a minute. You work one day. You can be happy about that day, but you got five, four more days to go to work. I must foresee life promotions. That's pretty good. You just don't want to stay at the same. No. No, you don't stay at the same. You don't stay at the same age on the job. You've been. You, you, just, you just need. There's some promotion waiting for you, but you got to discipline yourself and be determined you're gonna do it. Is that pretty good? All right, that's good. It. Forgetting those things which are behind, and let us. Paul said, "Go on unto perfection." Perfection does not mean you're gonna make a mistake. But if what it does mean, it means that you're mature. Uh-huh. Listen to all adults in here, primarily, uh, very seldom we fall. Come on, say me. We, we don't fall down. Just normal. Unless you done got kind of old and feeble. Isn't that right, Sister Waters? You have to be careful not to fall down. But we, we understand that you're going back to your childhood. We understand that. But normal people, not these little children here, they when they're growing up there, they fall. They fall and hurt and they get it back up. Well, I don't see Rico falling down every day. Doesn't mean he can't fall. Apparently, sometimes he does fall. But it ain't all the time. 
Christians sin, but we shouldn't sin all the time. We ought to be mature enough for some stuff we just don't do. If you do, you need to go ahead and repent of it quickly. Because that's a sign of maturity. Are you listening to me? Sometimes individuals miss services. On the first day of the week, they miss. January the 22nd, 1978, I obeyed the gospel. Hey, man. That pretty good? And I'm not bragging, just facts. I have missed zero first day of the week. I have never, God has blessed me. I have never missed one Sunday in 30 some years. Have you ever been sick? Yes. Sick last night as a dog. Sick. Sick. But guess what? You didn't know nothing about it. I ain't the only one being sick, so why you want to hear about my sickness? All that moaning and so forth. Everybody have problems. What I'm trying to get you to see is, it's persistent. Right? Start all over again. Are you listening to me? Amen. Let's go on perfection. What do you mean? You may fall, but you want to stay down there. Get up. I want to encourage the young people, men and women, Listen, life is sometimes difficult for everybody. Ask God to give you a second chance. Now just kind of cogitate. Think about what you're getting ready to do. You're coming into a new year, in the new year. Ask God to help you to do better. Think about better. Wait a minute. Better. Better. I want to do better. Amen. You just don't say I want to do better and don't do better. All right. I mean, you got to really put forth some effort to do better. You got to work at it. Right. Paul was concerned about his spiritual situation. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When Paul wrote Philippians along with Ephesians and other epistles, Paul was in prison. Paul wrote in Philippians, uh, Mark, and he was talking about joy. Yes, sir. How are you going to be joyful in prison? Well, he was. Amen. Paul said, listen, I, I've done a lot of preaching, but there's some more places I want to go. Right. I'm just not satisfied with what I have done. I want God to bless me so I can do more for his call. Right. And service to the Lord. That, that was Paul. Paul said, listen, Paul was concerned about his spiritual situation. Are you concerned about yours? And service to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Longevity. I like to live a long time. I like to live to get old. Older than my mother. But I don't want to just live to get old and just got age. Right. I want to be doing something. Because you soon later you're going to die. Jesus Christ didn't live about 33 years and he turned the whole system around from B.C. to A.D. It's not how long you live, it's how well you live, while you live. Preach, Brother Shannon. All right? Three points I want to deal with. We should forget the things behind us. Say amen. 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 Number two, we should focus on the things before us. Point number three, we should foresee the things beyond us. Oh boy. Mike, you see that? Huh? If you listen, you already got it. Things behind us, things before us, and things beyond us. We look for help. Let's go down this text. Not as though I have already attained. 
neither were already perfect. That's not all. Look here. Sensible. Look at it. Sensible evaluation. Listen to me carefully. You have to make a sincere and sin, a sincere and a serious evaluation of your own self. Now you need to go to the Bible and determine what's right and what's wrong. Don't look at another member and say, "Well, I'm doing more than she." No, don't do that. You're looking at the wrong standard. That, they're not the standard. The Bible is the standard. Right. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now, listen here. Sincere evaluation. Just be sincere about it. Right. You have to evaluate. Yeah. Evaluate it. Wait a minute. You old. Don't, don't even try to think that you're going to run the 100 yard dash in 30 seconds. Don't eat ridiculous. You how old? Well, you can say what you want. I, I know I no. A lot of time, members of the church, they say stuff like this here. Oh, I know I can do. It. Wait a minute. You need to count the calls. You may not be in the position to do what you want to do. Honest, sincere evaluation. Now, when it comes to the church, make a sincere. Evaluation of your life. Right. Well, I, well, I can do that. Wait a minute, it's easy to say that. Right. Yeah, but see, right. hey amen. Yeah. Sensible endeavors. What do you mean, sensible? Don't talk about trying to do something that's not sensible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've learned as a preacher, you can't expect people to do stuff full time when they got to work. Right. Come on, say amen. amen. I can't expect Brother Petty to do like I'm doing or Joe do like I'm doing right. and they got to work eight, ten hours a day. Right. Amen. All right. amen. But I follow after if that I may apprehend a uh, grasp for that for which also I am apprehending Christ. Now here's the American standard uh, Revised Standard Version says, not that I have already obtained this, I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ has made me his own. Christ made me his own. I'm guess what? I'm going to press on to do things for him. Do y'all get that? Christ he captured me. Hey, Christ is good to me. Amen. And I just need to do my best to do what I can. Now, make a full stop. You got to stop sometime and think. Watch this here. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I don't have it yet. But this one thing. Yes, sir. Watch this. I do. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes you can just do one thing. Yes, sir. And do it well is enough. Right. Amen. You, ever, you ever come in your house and the house all messed up? You don't know where to start. Sometimes just get one thing done. Right. Then get another thing. In the church, do one thing. Don't try to do too many things. Tank culture is going to frustrate you. Just do one thing. Now, but Paul said, this one thing I do, what? Stop. What is that? Forgetting those things which are behind. There it is. You got to make that stop. Make a full stop. I want to tell you today, you make that full stop. Forget about that stuff. Right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, forget about, amen, somebody. Amen. What somebody did to you last year. Amen. Preach, Brother Shannon. Amen. Sometimes we can't go on 
to do nothing because we're thinking about what they did to me last year. Right. How they mistreated me last year. Right. How nobody talked to me. This is another year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I pray for me here. I'm just kind of struggling a little bit with my voice. Hey, I'm all right. Amen. Like a full stop. We should focus on the thing before us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Make a fresh start. <clears throat> you like that, Brother Fox? Yeah. Make a full stop. Make a fresh start. Right. What's the plan? And reaching forward until those things are before me. <sighs> Y'all see that? Amen. Push. I press toward the mark. Hey man. Sometimes folk tell you, look, I want you to rush home, rush to the store. <coughs> you walking, rush to the store and get me a loaf of bread. You didn't put a fast beat. But a bulldog get behind you, that's when you press. Press! For what? The prize. Amen. For the prize, listen to this, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's a great call to be in Christ. Right, right. Amen. Right. We should foresee the things beyond us. Let us therefore as many as be perfect What do you mean perfect? Mature. You mature? You want to be mature? <clears throat> Stay with me. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal them unto you. Watch this. <clears throat> Everybody is not going to be mature at the same time. Right. Yeah. Some people don't have the same mind that you have about something. Be careful by condemning people who are not where you are. Hey Amen. I like uh, this part here. <clears throat> America uh, Revised Standard Version. Let those of us who are mature be thus minded. And if in anything you are otherwise minded, God will reveal it unto you. I'll step. Stay with me. Nevertheless, we certainly hope that you've enjoyed a brand new start. May God continue to bless you richly.